Welding gas bottles contain a significant amount of stored energy, so it is vitally important to secure them to something so they can't fall over, break off the valve, and try to kill us. So let's do that. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, last week we got started making a welding cart for my MIG welder. We got the base frame put together. And this week we're going to design and make a sheet metal bracket to safely anchor the gas bottles. Let's get started. This is the model for the welding cart that I showed in the previous video. And today what we're focused on is this bottle bracket in here that actually mounts the bottles to the side of the cabinet. You can see there are four screw holes here to mount with M6 screws into the threaded inserts that are already in the cabinet. And then there are semi-circular cutouts, or almost semi-circular, we'll get to that in a minute, uh, cutouts for the bottles to nestle into, and then there are little keyhole slots to drop a chain into to anchor the bottles in place. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go through the modeling steps on this because I think it's interesting and uh, people do seem to be interested in how to model complex parts in Fusion. So let me go ahead and turn this one off and we'll create a new one. Now there's one thing that I want to do here. The cabinet's black and it makes it a little bit hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to right click here, change appearance, and I'm going to drag a different appearance onto that component just so that you can see the holes better and you can see what I'm doing. Now to make a sheet metal component that sits into a larger model we really want that to be a separate component so that we can have a separate design we can generate drawings from it and we can have a separate cam operation to cut it out on the plasma cutter. So I will right click on my top level item in the tree here and just say new component. I will make this a sheet metal component and we'll give it a name. Now what Fusion has done is it's activated that new component for editing so the other components are visible here but they're kind of grayed out so they'll stay out of the way. I'm going to turn the bottles off for now just to uh, make this a little bit easier to see. And I want to start by creating a sketch on the side of the cabinet to define our base, uh, our base flange. So I will create a rectangle throw it across these two holes and we'll put some dimensions on that. I want to hit D for dimension and say the overall height of this is 1.5 inches. Great, and now I want to put some dimensions to the side of the cabinet. Have these offset maybe an eighth of an inch from the side of the cabinet just so that there is a little bit of slop there and if we have some error we won't end up overlapping it. Okay, and now I'm gonna hit P for project and I wanna project these holes and I'm gonna set the line type to construction so we'll get some construction circles in our sketch where those holes are located. And now I wanna center this, so I'll hit D for dimension and I'll say 0.75, I know that's an inch and a half high, so that will center my flange over those holes. And then I will create a couple of circles to make the holes turn off the construction line type so these will be solid and I'll put a couple of holes here that we'll use uh, to actually create the holes in the flange and D for dimension now I know I'm using six millimeter hardware those are M6 screws so I will make these eight millimeter holes just to make sure we have plenty of slop this is the sheet metal part we're gonna fold it into shape and we want it to fit easily Okay, so now I can right click in here. I'm gonna go over to my sheet metal tools and I'm going to create a flange. And I've selected my profile and um, I want it to be a new body because we're already within a component. Click OK and there we have the base flange. Now I can open this up and we can look at the sheet metal rule and in fact, the rule here is not the right one. This is an aluminum rule. So I will click here to switch rule and I will go to my library and I will select my mild steel 16 gauge rule that I have predefined. And uh, you can see more about that in my previous sheet metal videos. I'll maybe throw up a link here about how to define uh, sheet metal rules. 
Okay, so there's the base flange. That's how we're gonna attach this over those screw holes. Now let's create another flange. Click this outside edge, click flange, and then we'll pull a flange out. We don't want this to come out 90 degrees. We'll make it 70 degrees. And then from a length perspective, we need to figure out kind of what looks like about the right length. So let me turn the bottles back on and so we can kind of see, and I'm gonna say three and a half inches looks to me to be about right. That'll allow us to have a nice curve, but still have some material left on the sides. So we'll just leave it at that. Okay, that gives us that flange. Now let's uh, bring some more flanges down. Click here, create a flange, pull that down, but I want that to be vertical, so I'll make this one also 70 degrees. And what well, looks about right. Let's call it an inch and a quarter. So now I need the return flange that's gonna come back to the cabinet. So I'll click flange, select this corner, and we'll pull that in. Now I don't know how long this needs to be to go directly to that. So I've got my height datum, I've got my bend position inside, I've got my height datum set to outer faces. And I don't know how long that is, so I'm gonna measure it. So next to height here, I'll click the three little dots and click measure, and I will click this outside surface and the cabinet and it will measure that and automatically enter it 3.308 inches and so now that comes directly to there and now i can do my final flange click on that corner flange create now since this comes directly to the cabinet and i have my bend position set to inside when i pull this up the bend will come inside that and will be flush to the cabinet now how far up does that need to go i don't care exactly it just needs to go past the past the the uh, the screw holes there so that looks like a little too little a little too much let's say 1.45 inches okay that looks pretty good so that's the overall shape now the next thing we need to do is we need to cut out a hole in this bracket for the bottle and the easiest way to do that is right click on the bottom surface here, create sketch. Now I'm gonna hit P for project, and I'm going to just select the bodies of the bottles, and that will create circular sketches on the bottom of this. Okay, finish sketch. So now I've got these circles, and I can just, let me turn the bottles back off again so I can Click, click, control click. I'm just gonna select the entire region there. And I'm gonna right click, say extrude. And I'm just gonna drag that through. And that's going to cut out the, uh, the semicircular holes. Now these bottom ones are actually circular. The top is not circular. It's distorted because the bracket it has, is at an angle. But the software has figured all of that out for me. Now, one of the things that the software has not figured out, however, is that sheet metal, when I cut this on a plasma cutter, you can see that this angle here, this edge is clearly beveled. It was at this point in the video where I launched into a long tangent about how to project the top line of the beveled cut and then uh, extrude through and cut the edges perpendicular. And I realized after the fact that this wasn't necessary at all, because all you have to do is select the line that you want to cut on the flat pattern in the cam workspace when you're generating the G code for the plasma cutter and it'll cut perpendicular. So all of this is unnecessary, let's just skip ahead. So if we go up here to our sheet metal part and under modify, we can say unfold and it wants the stationary entity. I'll just pick this front surface and then I can select the bends. I'm just gonna say unfold all bends. And now what it's done is it's added an item in the timeline here that has unfolded that sheet metal part. So now I can do work on it and I can refold it. To actually model the chain holes in this, I want some lines for symmetry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit L for line, set my line type to construction. I'm gonna find the midpoint here and bring down a line. Now I'm gonna come over here and bring down another line that I want in the center of this bottle mount. Now, in order to get that in the center of the bottle mount, I'm gonna take some dimensions. So I'm gonna do a dimension across here, maybe, if I can get it to stick to something. Oh, it won't. Okay, well, let's do a dimension instead. 
from this point to that point. Great. And then I will do a dimension from there to there and set that to this divided by two. And that'll give me a symmetry line that I can use. Now let's actually draw the keyhole for the chain. So C for circle and I'll draw a circle and then I'll come back up here and I will also select slot and do a center to center slot, pull that down. And that's the general shape. We just need to put some dimensions on it. So I'm going to make this hole three quarters of an inch. I'm going to make the width of this 245. The overall length of the slot needs to be 1.6 inches. And again, I just pulled these dimensions off of my other welder. And the dimension from the start of the fold up to here should be 0.75. Okay, so that gives me kind of the positioning vertically, horizontally. It doesn't really matter that much. I'm just going to drag it around until it feels like it's in a good position where there's plenty of material on each side and we're not doing anything crazy with the cut. That feels like the right position to me. So now I'm going to come up here, select mirror, and I'm going to select all the parts of this slot that matter. I'm going to mirror it around this line and then I'm going to hit mirror again. And I'm going to mirror all the important parts of this slot around this line. And now I've got those slots all the way across, finish the sketch. And now I should be able to come in here and just select, just click and control click to select all of these regions. Right click extrude, push those through the part. And now we have keyholes. Now the last thing I need to do is place the holes in the bottom down here. So I will click on the button here to refold the faces. And now I will create a sketch on this surface and hit P for project. And I'll click on the side of the cabinet. I want the line type to be construction and that will bring construction lines right here into my sketch where the holes are on the side of the cabinet. And then I will turn off the line type, hit C for circle and do exactly what I did up top and just model a couple of circles here. Dimension those to eight millimeters. Finish sketch. Now select both of those. Extrude. Distance to object and we'll just go to this to the back and now we have our bottle bracket. Hit F for fillet. I'm gonna put some fillets on some of these corners just so everything isn't sharp. A half inch look about right. That looks good enough. And there we have it. So now we can come up here and say create flat pattern and that flat pattern will be created inside of the component. And this is what we need to go cut out on the plasma cutter. And again, I've done this in a previous video and showed how to post this and set up the cutout. I will go ahead and put a link in the description and up in the corner to how that is done. And so the next thing we need to do is just take this out to the plasma cutter and cut it out. Now, when it actually comes time to bend this, I'm going to need to know where the bends go. So I've created a drawing from the flat pattern. I showed how to do this in a previous video and it actually has all of the bends marked. I've put dimensions on those and I'll print this out and take it out in the shop. Now, one thing that you see in this drawing that you haven't seen in my previous drawings are these notations on the bends and these are actually generated automatically. So I'll just click this and delete it. And if you come up here to the text note, the one with the little lightning bolt and select that tool, then come and select a bend, it'll automatically create that text. And then you can move it around and put it wherever you want it. But this up 70 radius 0.083, that was generated automatically from the bend information in the model. I also created another page here on the drawing that shows the shape with the angles on it, just as further reference that I can look at while I'm bending. 
So I think we have everything we need. We need to just post the G code, take this out, cut it on the plasma cutter, bend it and bolt it on the side of the cabinet. I've got a sheet of 16 gauge mild steel here in the plasma cutter. I've got it set up, I've got it zeroed and we should be ready to cut. Let's uh, give it a go. Have I ever mentioned how much I love having a plasma cutter? Okay, looks like there's some uh, smoke residue to clean up and I got a little bit of dross around the edges. I'll just grab my two inch right angle die grinder and a flap disc and knock that off. And then we should be ready to bend it up. This is just a 12 volt right angle die grinder with a two inch roll lock disc on it. In this case, I'm running a two inch flap disc and I'm just gonna knock the dross off. Now, sometimes the dross is loose and it just flies off when the flap wheel hits it. If not, this will grind it off and get it flush. I'm sure I could do some things on the plasma cutter to get a little bit less. I think the consumables probably need to be replaced, but this will work for what I need today. And what I'm really looking forward to is hearing it down in the comments all about how I can injure myself by wearing gloves while using a die grinder. That'll be a new one for me. Okay, now that all the dross is off, I will uh, now just dress it up on the, Squatch, on the Scotch Bright wheel on the buffer. There we go. All clean, ready to bend. I just realized when I did this drawing that I put my baseline dimension in the wrong place. Rather than measuring from the bottom of the part, I got the first dimension from there, and then the rest of them I actually measured from that line up. So I did a little bit of math, no harm, no foul. I figured it out before I bent the part. So let's try again. So the first bend is at a height of 9.19 inches. And that is an up bend according to the diagram. So that's actually the only one that appears on the front of the part. The other bends need to be marked on the back. Okay, sanity check. That'll bend up. These will bend around. That one bends the other way. Okay, that all looks right to me. Take it over the bending brake and uh, finish the part. Been looking at this diagram and looking at what the finished part is going to look like. And I've been thinking about exactly how I want to go about trying to bend this thing. And I think I figured out the sequence. I think if I do the inside 70 degree bend first, followed by this top bend, followed by this outside and this inside, I'll be able to do everything with the wide plate and not have to do anything exciting here on the bending brake. So, Let's give it a shot. So we're gonna start with, make sure I've got this the correct side up. We're gonna start with this 
70 degree bend that's marked right here. I'm just moving this around, trying to make sure that I end up in a reasonable place so that I've got uh, good bearing across all these bend marks. The other constraint here is that, especially for these two bends in the front, I want to approach everything from the outside going in so that if there's any discrepancy in how I uh, line up the bend line, it ends up not accumulating. The error comes from both ends and meets in the middle. So the overall part might be shallower or deeper, but it'll still all line up. Now I want to go to 70 degrees, so I'm going to set my little angle gauge on here, and uh, we'll see if the magnetics cause any issues. That's 70, but it's gonna come back, so we're about 68.6. And we're sitting right there, 70.3. Now I want to flip it around this way and do this bend up to 70 degrees as well. And we'll do basically the same thing here. And we'll pull 70 degrees. There we go, 70.6, about the same as the top one. Great. Now we'll flip it around and I wanna do the bottom bend first and since that's a short tab, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a 16 gauge spacer behind this. And then this one needs to come up 90 degrees. Then, I want to flip it around this way and do the last bend. And of course, this uh, clamping bar is too wide because I didn't pay attention. But fortunately, I have a narrower one that should fit inside and work just fine. That looks very much like what I modeled in the computer, no? Let's take it over and put it on the cart and see if it fits. We've got the part made and all we have to do is mount it on here and everything went perfectly and there were no problems whatsoever. Except when I first put it up here, you remember when I made this part initially, there was only one pair of holes. And unfortunately, they didn't line up. And it took me a minute to figure out what was wrong, and then I realized what I had done. When I measured these holes initially, um, I measured across with a tape measure, but because the hook of the tape measure always gets in the way, it's easier to just slide it over, line up the one inch mark, and then measure with the other end. And there it lines up with the 16. Now, of course, since I started from the one inch mark, they're actually 15 inches apart. But what I wrote down was 16 inches, and that's why I ended up with holes that were too far apart. So I came back in, I marked the holes, grabbed a step bit, drilled some new holes that would fit, and I can't drill straight with a hand drill to save my life, and so they're not exactly lined up vertically, they're not in exactly the right position horizontally, 
and I thought, this is stupid. I'll just change the CAD model and have my robot make another one. So that's what I did. And now the holes line up. I just went and changed that one dimension from 16 inches to 15 inches, re-exported it, and lo and behold, they line up. So I've got some M6 hardware here, and we'll just screw this on. Honestly, with all the bends here, I wasn't sure that it was all gonna line up, but you know, for sheet metal work, this doesn't have to be super precise because I made the holes just slightly oversized. You know, they're M6 screws, so I think I made the holes a little bit bigger to uh, just allow a little bit of slop, and sure enough, it all goes in there beautifully. And there we go. One nice solid bracket. And the only thing left to do is throw a bottle in here and see if it fits. And lo and behold, I have a bottle right here. Look at that. Then we'll just anchor it with a chain right in the slot. And this chain's obviously too long. And that is exactly what we need. Goes in there beautifully. Even if you try to lift it, it won't go over the top. Now I just need to cut that to the right length and we have ourselves a welding cart. And that just turned out beautifully. Got room for another gas bottle on the back if I wanna put on a pure argon cylinder or if I wanted a pure CO2 or a helium mix for some reason at some point. Um, we've got the expansion on the back there with the uh, slots for chains to anchor another one. And then we've got the welder on top business end pointed this way and then i've got everything i need i got spare tips tig torch parts tungstens got all my clamps got uh, filler metal weld practice metal got the spool gun the regulator which i need to mount on there now and all of my safety and ppe gear so i am going to call that done, at least for now. I'm going to eventually put some hooks on the other side of the cart, I think, to hold all of the cables so they're not draped over the top of the welder. It is, is another one of those things where it's done enough for me to use it, and so will I ever finish all of the little things that I'm thinking about? Eh, I don't know. Subscribe to the channel and find out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.